Don't you just hate it when it's like freezing and your windshield wipers get all froze up and you can't see nothing? And, you know, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna stop? I mean, all, every 15 minutes? You can't do that. So what do you do? Sometimes you go, you know, you, know, you gotta sit here and do this and try to catch your windshield wipers, smack them like that, get the ice off of them. There we go. But that ain't safe. You know, there's that guy over at Jim's G Travels. He he came up with an ingenious idea once. He tied a string to his windshield wiper, put it out to his mirror, had it come back to his little wing window. He had a, a freight liner. And when it was bad out, he'd open up his wing window and he'd pull on the string and it would slap the windshield wiper. I'll give him an A for effort or for ingenuity, but for actual effort and how it worked, uh, probably more of a C or D. <laughs> the string would always fall down and it would never work. You know what I think I should do? I think I should uh, like invent something that would take care of that. Maybe like some heated windshield wiper blades. That might be something. I should check into that. <laughs> well, guys, Long Owl Larry, Big Blue here, and I have found the answer. It has always been a problem. Uh, growing up in Wisconsin and traveling across the country and other, you know, colder states and stuff, you get snow and you get the ice, it's always a problem. Your windshield wipers, they get ice, they get snow build up on them, and then they start riding up off the glass of the windshield and it doesn't clear the complete path and everything. Sometimes you get all kinds of streaks and stuff. And we've all done it. We've all rolled down the window and sitting driving down the highway, reach over their arm and smack the windshield wiper, you know, and try to get the ice build up off. We've done it, and it's just not really that safe. Um, that is true about JVG Travels. He did actually come with that. It was, it was, he comes up with stuff like that all the time. And he did it years ago, and he came up with this idea to tie a string to it, have it come in his wing window, and it worked. He was all excited to call me up. <clears throat> if you don't know who JVG Travels is, a real good friend of mine. He has his own YouTube channel, JVG Travels. And he would pull that thing, and he was all excited about it. It works, it works. And then, like, a couple days later, I asked him, I said, how is your little windshield wiper cleaner device working and eh, not too good the string keeps falling off the mirror and <laughs> so it's kind of a pain in the butt but i have looked around and i actually looked on i've done a lot of research and i have looked on like amazon looking for heated wiper blades and everything else and i'll tell you right now i did not know these existed i did not know that you could get heated wiper blades um one of my subscribers, I said something about it, and one of my subscribers actually said, hey, get some heated wiper blades. And so I did a bunch of searching around, and I found, I went on Amazon, typed it in and stuff, and there was different companies, and I kind of looked at the different companies and everything. And I decided that I would go with Thermoblade. Um, they look like a very high quality uh, wipers and everything, and I decided I was going to go with these. I looked on Amazon. And they had Generation 1 and they had Generation 2 wiper blades on there. And I thought, what's the difference? So I looked around on the internet and I punched up uh, www.thermalblade.com. I found it on there. That's their website. And I will put a link to their website on the bottom of this video in the description. And I went on there and I looked and then there's Generation 3 there. But you can't get them on Amazon. And I was like, what in the world? So I contacted Thermoblade and asked for more information and everything. And you guys saw in a past video, the lady called me back. I kind of had a little bit of the record, the voice, a little bit of the phone call on the camera, on the video. And I asked her, and her name was Cheryl, and she was excited about her Thermoblade heated wiper blades. She, she was full of excitement. <laughs> And we had a conversation about it, and I asked her, what's the difference between these different generations? Basically, a real easy exp explanation is the Generation 1 was designed and built, and it did not have a replaceable heating element. It was just kind of put it on, wears out, take it off. Um, so they upgraded it, and they made a Generation 2. And now the Generation 2, I guess, had a, a heating element, a little wire or whatever, 
that would go down into the wiper blade, and you could replace that. And she said, on smaller vehicles with smaller wipers, not too big of a deal, but when you get a big wiper blade, she goes, it can be a pain in the butt. She goes, they give directions and every instructions on how to do it, but, you know, it's still a little bit. So they came out with Generation 3. <clears throat> so I ordered these up, and I paid for these. These go for $149. And if you guys heard from that phone call that I had with the lady, they, um, um, I paid for these, and then what the deal is is that I'm going to install these, try these out, and I am going to uh, review them in two weeks. And at the end of the two weeks, we're going to have a giveaway, and I'm going to be giving away one of these set of wiper blades. And what we'll do is we'll pick a person just with my usual random YouTube comment picker, and then I'll send that person's email directly to Thermal King. You'll contact them, tell them what size wiper blades you have on your vehicle, and they'll send you a free set. That's pretty cool, guys. So you guys get to win a set of these. $149.99, these things go for it. So that's cool. So these here, these are the wintertime blades, and I kind of messed up because when I ordered them, I didn't have her send the summertime blades to because you can actually take these off and you can actually replace these with a summertime non-heated blades that clip right in. And then in the summertime, you're not wearing out your winter blades. And then when it gets cold out again, you just put these back on and you got fresh blades, good to go. So these things here, I'm on their website looking at it. And they're silicone blades. They're a one-time install, basically low cost to maintain. Uh, thermostatically controlled. That's the pretty cool thing, is that they come with this modular right here, and it has some lights on it, and one of them has a green light, and it, when it's lit up, status is okay. It has another one, W1, W2, those are red, and I was reading instructions, if they flash, they come on, that means there's something wrong, maybe one of the wiper blades or whatever, an element or whatever, it tells all different scenarios in the, in the instructions that you can try to figure out what the problem is, and then contact the company about it. Mm -hmm. Their aerodynamic spoiler reduces lift. It's got these lips on it. It's almost like an airplane wing. It's got a, like a a part on here that's sloped down, and then it's got like a kickback thing on it. So it push down on there, make sure it stays tight to your windshield, so it cleans good and everything. High quality silicone compound ensures greater visibility. Uh, heats up at or below four degrees Celsius. Um. Which is, I guess, it's 38 degrees Fahrenheit. There you go. <laughs> so at 38 degrees Fahrenheit, for all you U.S. people that don't understand Celsius, with like me, um, at 38 degrees, this will heat. This will turn on. When it goes above 38 degrees outside, this turns off and it doesn't put heat to it. So it's pretty cool. Um, all sees the performance. Cost, time savings, auto-activated auto heating element. We talked about that. Reduces annoying chatter with that blade. How it's got that aerodynamic thing on there. And activated silicone coating action. It's supposed to keep the windshield pretty clean. So there we go. Uh, eliminates ice, snow, buildup. That's what we're after. And you can put it on all kinds of different vehicles. So I will put their, um, their link down below. And in the description, and you guys can check them out. And guess what? If you go in there and you give those guys a call and say, I want to order up a set of heated windshield wiper blades, all you got to do is say, hey, Long Haul Larry sent me. Guess what? You're going to get 10% off, too. Cheryl threw that in there. I, talk, I sent her an email and said, hey, would you like to throw in a discount besides the giveaway? And she said, yeah, let's do 10%. So they're going to do a 10% discount. All you got to do is mention my name. And I don't get any kickbacks from this or not. I don't do that. Um... And she wanted to send me this. She's like, I'll send it to you. You do your review video and everything. And she goes, well, I'll send them off to you. And I just went, no, I don't do that. And so I paid for them because I like to pay for the products. And then uh, I can give you guys an honest review about it. It does come with the wiring harness, which we know Long Haul Larry does not like wiring. <laughs> it's pretty simple. This just plugs into this modular box. Got your, your black and uh, red wires here and everything. It's got a fuse in line. And then this wire right here is a temperature probe. You just need to mount this someplace down in a vehicle where it gets, you know, fresh, clean air with the actual temperature instead of having heat coming off in a motor and affecting this. 
So when it turns 38 degrees, it actually reads 38 degrees. And, um, and then it's got just the little plugs that plug in to the windshield wiper blades. So you have to run these up and run up to each wiper. So I'm gonna install these and check them out. All right, guys, I'm going to install these wiper blades. Pretty simple, you think? Wiper blades are wiper blades, right? I can never figure out how to get these off. Let's see, maybe up, no. Here we go. So you wanna make sure they're installed. They have the thermal blade name on them. And you wanna make sure that they're installed like this because they have a little aerodynamic lip on here that's gonna press it against the windshield. You can make sure it doesn't move around. You just have to figure out how to get these on. I'm not really sure on this one. Maybe this way. Yep, that's the way they're gonna go on. So I would have been wrong. So we're just gonna, these little tabs here just snap in, I think. Boom, click, there it goes. Rotates, so keep it to the windshield. And there it is, just snaps in. There you go. All right, these wires here, they plug in. These are waterproof connectors. They have little O-rings down inside there that'll keep the elements from getting into this wire connection. You just snap it in there. This one. And when you use the, if you switch over in, in the summertime and you use a summertime blade, the summertime blade will actually come with a little plug that plugs onto there that snaps. It's probably just like this plug here, except it's sealed on that end, just to keep the water and stuff from getting in there and corroding it over the summertime. So I'm gonna put it like that. I'm gonna get some zip ties and I'm gonna zip tie that all to it. All right, guys. Let's put these on here. Just gonna provide a little bit of an extra, extra uh, little bit of a play there so that the windshield wipers can move back and forth. Sure, it's not going to hit anything back here. And then what I'm going to do. Is I'm actually gonna tuck this up here. This is the rubber molding for the windshield. And I'm actually just gonna tuck this wire right up inside here and it will hold it because it has a real good grip on there. So I think that will hold it. It gives it enough room that it'll come up. I think that'll be just fine right there. So I'm just gonna keep going along. And just tucking these wires right up inside here. Wires are all hidden. Like I said, probably too big a zip ties, but cut them off to give a clean appearance.
there we go. We can clean our mess up up here. Probably need the zip ties down below. I think I forgot to pull the, yeah I did. Forgot to pull the protective sleeve off here. There we go. So now, oh, I got a couple more zip ties to cut here. There we go. Nice install. Everything's all zip tied, tied up, so it'll all be good to go. I think it'll work good. All right, guys, we got the wiring all ran. I'm actually gonna mount it right here, I think. I think I'm gonna put it right there. That gives me access to my wiring harness, which is right here. So I can plug that in. And actually, the temperature sensor, this is probably the one thing because these are made, I think, for more cars. Um, this is how long the temperature sensor is. And they want it to be in the front of the hood. Well, I can't attach it to the hood because the hood goes up, so the wire, you know, can't have a cross there. Um, so I could put it down, like down there in the bumper or something like that. That's where a lot of the older freight lines, that's where they put their temperature sensor. But the wire, once again, is not long enough. It won't go all the way down in the frame and go all the way up to the front. You don't want to have it close in this engine bay here. You don't want to have this tip somewhere in this engine bay because it's going to get the heat off the engine and it's not going to read 38 degrees when it's 38 degrees. It's not. Sorry about that wind. I don't know if it's catching or not. I'm trying to stay out of it. This right here is actually the, the temperature sensor for the truck. When you're inside and you look at the gauge in the, in the truck, it tells you outside temperature. That's this right here. That's where it comes from. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this line up through here, have it come down, come across, and I'm going to zip tie this and have this sensor sitting right out here just like this. That way it's right with the other ones. And I'll just put a couple zip ties around that bottom mirror, mirror mount. Um, actually, you know what? I got some little sticky pads that would work perfect for that, that hold that wire. And I wouldn't have zip ties. That'll look better. So I'll do that. Put this module right here <clears throat> i'm going to hook this up right here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to drill this hole out just a little bit bigger so it fits over the top of this i can use that mounting bolt to mount this and then i'm going to put some of my double lock tape on the back side of here to tape this too and to keep this taped on there and um, they say velcro or you can put screws in it I don't think the boss would like if I drilled holes and screwed it in a truck, but I got this bolt right here that I could use. Put that on there, and then I'll just get another nut that threads on there and thread that over the top of there. So that'll work pretty good. Um, and here's the really cool thing, because I've been looking, you can see I got my little voltmeter out here, and I've been looking at wiring, okay, what can I get the wire power from? And I'm thinking, you know, oh, the boss ain't gonna like me cutting a wire in his truck. Well, here's your black and red wires. And this is what really makes me think that I've made a good choice on this company. You just hook this up to the battery. So the batteries are right down here behind this wall right here. So I'll just run the wire, it's right down there. I can hook the ground wire to some ground connections right here. I can hook it in right there. <clears throat> run the wire down to the battery. I hook it directly up to the battery. But then you think, well, then they're gonna be on all the time. This is why I think I made a good choice in this company. Um, let's see here. Once the two connections will, they will send power to the heating element and the thermal wiper blade will begin to heat. When the engine is shut off, the WCM will interrupt power to the wiper, ensuring no battery drain while the vehicle is off. The WCM is independent from the vehicle's computer system to ensure universal fit on for any 12 volt vehicle. But here it is. If troubleshooting, there's no lights. So this module right here, wherever I just put it, right here. So this module has no lights, so it's not reading anything. Guess what? You don't have this truck running, there'll be no power to it. 
but you're saying, well, it's gonna be hooked up to the battery, so it's gonna have power all the time. This thing here, the WCM not detecting voltage above 13.5. So your batteries usually sit around a 12, 12 and a half, you know, volt range when the truck is not running, when your car is not running. But then when you start your car up, then the alternator starts charging and they usually run about 13.8, 14, stuff like that. So this thing will turn off automatically if it goes below 13.5. That's, that's pretty smart. So the inventor of this, that was a pretty smart little add-on because then I don't have to hunt for a wire that turns on and off with my ignition. I hook it directly to the battery and this thing, when I turn the truck off, the voltage drops below 13.5, it turns off. Start the truck up, voltage goes up over 13.5, turns on. That's awesome. Very awesome. Because long haul Larry don't like wiring, this makes it simple. All right guys, we're going to install this module. Now you can see what I've used here is I'm gonna use that bolt hole. I did drill it out. Probably the people at Thermobliter are like, no, don't, don't drill it. You better be very careful. This is an electronic device. If you get into this edge here, I bet you you'll wreck this component. You'll, well, for one thing, you're gonna unseal the box and moisture is gonna get in there. So if you do do something like that, not recommended for, what is it? not recommend that you do this at home or something like that, I stay on TV. But I was very careful, got it, left plenty of room there. There's nothing that's even close. And so now this will fit right up in here. And it'll go right on there. I don't have a nut for this. I'm gonna just put a zip tie on there just for a temporary thing. When I get home, I'll put a nut on there. But that way I can put a nut on there, that holds it. But I'm also gonna use this 3M dual lock tape. This stuff is awesome, guys. I love this stuff. <clears throat> I buy this in um, three or four or three or six foot lengths. I get it off of Amazon. This stuff is really hard to find. This stuff is not like regular Velcro or nothing like that. It's a plastic deal and it locks together. Moisture and dirt and stuff doesn't make it, you know, non-pliable. And it it snaps and locks in. And it will hold anything. These things are great. I cut myself there, sorry. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> um this stuff is awesome. I'll put a link of this stuff down below in my description of my video. This stuff is some, I've said this in videos before, this stuff is awesome. It will hold just about anything. But there you go, that zip tie will actually keep that on there too. So there we go, that module is nice and glued on there. So next I'm going to be plugging the wires in. <clears throat> Try to make a nice insulation of this. Here we go. There's a nice seal on there to keep that all good. How's it going, buddy? Good. And then we'll zip tie all these wires together here. Guys, I am going to install this uh, sensor wire for the temperature now. And I'm gonna put it right out here so it's out of the sun. So the sun is not gonna detect it. As I was saying, this is the one now and it works good. So I'm gonna put this one right here. And I'm actually running this around and what I did is loosen up my mirror bracket so I can feed my wire behind it. And it'll come out and come down through there. I fed it all up behind there so it won't get caught by anything. I'm gonna actually just use these. You just use a little 3M adhesive on the back of these things and there there's wire clips. You put them on there and you can hold wire. And I know what you're thinking, oh, them white clips are gonna look bad. Don't worry about it. I took care of that. I made them black. We sharpified them. <laughs> All right guys, I have loosened up my mirror so I can get this wire behind here real days. And I'm just gonna tuck this up here, just like so. There we go. And then I'll just run them back in. I don't know, 
<laughs> you know, too many truck drivers bring their own impact. <laughs> so now I'll just put a zip tire on here. This one will be coming off. I put the nut on there, but. And another zip tie. Oh, here's one. There we go. Ooh, that's looking good. <clears throat> and it's looking good if I uh, say my soul myself. All right, the ground wire. It's actually gonna be connected right on the front end here. There's a ground junction. that up like so all right guys uh, the ground wire there's actually a ground wire block right down here this, this is grounded right to the chassis so I'm gonna put it right on this block right here and I have myself it's a wire connector so I'm just gonna cut this wire so it's long enough so somewhere right about there we'll give it just a little bit extra you always want to give the wires just a little bit extra go and we'll just uh, strip this back just a cheap stripper <laughs> a cheap stripper <laughs> and then I'm gonna use this here I always carry this with me I have jars this in my shop I carry one on my truck anytime I do electrical work I always put this on it's truck light Corrosive preventing compound. And I'll put the feed wire up through there and crimp it in. There we go. And then I always take a little bit of it and I just kind of smear it on there. Keeps things from corroding. Put that down there. Here's the nut. Put a little bit on there because it was actually pretty corroded. Tighten our ground back up. Here we go. Really? This is where you gotta park, dude? <laughs> I'm recording here. Recording in progress. And basically this wire is just gonna go up underneath the cab and the battery box is under the steps. But to protect the wire, I'll put wiring some uh, a sleeve around it. So it doesn't arc and short anything out. Put this last zip tie right here. And we'll snip all our zip ties off for a cleaner look. There we go. Now I will just put the wire back up underneath the cab here and I will pull the steps off and get to the battery and reach up in there and grab that wire and hook it up to a power supply. Here we go. Put the hee haw. Oh wow, they're different sizes. Uh, this one. Yep. So 
I'm going to put two different size bolts on here. go. Mm. So we'll be able to hook up right to there. All right guys, we got the wire all ran back here. Got it hanging down here. I put in with this wire loom to run it back so it's all protected and put some more uh, coating around it. One little trick that I like to do because it goes through, I'm putting it through a hole in here. I like to wrap it with some electrical tape so that it doesn't wear and cut into the wire. But then what you can do is actually take a larger zip tie. This is pretty much overkill. But then, just like so. And I'll just cut it off about here. Leave that little lip on there like that. That way it can't pull back out. And I'll put one on the other side. I, don't, I didn't have another big one like that. This one will work fine though. We'll put one over here. Cut that off just a little bit long. There we go. Now the, the, now the wire sit there, so it won't come through. But the wire is just a little bit too short to get there. So we're gonna have to add just a chunk of wire. And be careful not to touch anything metal with your wrench here, because she'll spark on ya. Kinda sucks, we're kinda really close. Right there. Just not quite. And then we'll just connect it up. And I'll put some more corrosive stuff on here. Since I got this apart. There we go. Go. Go on a zip tie around there. There we go. Now we got it hooked up to our battery. Now let's test it out. Now. Are the lights on? No, nothing is on. It's all connected up to power. Let's turn. The, let's start the truck up and see if the lights come on. Probably gonna. My tools are probably gonna fall. Turn the truck back off, and look at that, power is off. That's pretty cool, that's a quality idea right there, boys and girls. I just grabbed the instructions and it was flashing green. I was worried about it, if it needed to be steady green. And I was wondering what that meant, because uh, I would think it would just be green, showing that it's good, that the, you know everything is good. 
I looked on the instructions, it says troubleshooting. It says flashing green. It is above 13.5 volt detected, but the therm thermist thermistor, <laughs> I'll take the thermometer, but um, is warmer than plus four Celsius, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. So that just means it's warmer than 39 degrees out here. So it's not gonna be on, but it, it's receiving power. None of the red lights are on, everything should be good. It's just saying, hey, everything's good, but it's too warm for them to work. When it gets below 38 degrees, then it will be steady green. So, pretty cool. So I'm gonna quick clean up my area, package up, put my side fairing back on, and uh, clean up my mess, and we'll get on the road. Well, there we go, guys. We're all install installed. Oh. Got our wires all ran. Got this wire nice behind this mirror bracket here. Running out here to my temperature probe. Everything coax cable. Got our box nicely installed there. With that, we're gonna put a nut on there when we get home, but we got this uh, nice uh, 3M double lock tape, which is awesome. Like I said, description in the video. Everything is coax run down, grounded right to the frame. Run down to the power. Got an inline fuse all hooked up. Everything's checked out, works good. Well, there you guys go. Um, these wiper blades are installed. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I'm actually like, let's go snow and ice. Let's go. I want, I want to go. I want to just see what's going on. So, once again, like I said, it is www.thermoblade.com. I did purchase these with my own money because um, I like to do that. But I set it up with a company that there will be a drawing for you guys, the subscribers. When is that drawing gonna be? I don't know, I'm really excited about this. I know this is a quality product. Just by putting it together, you can see things are just right. It is built right. I I really don't have any kind of qualms about this and everything, but I figure we'll wait until we get into some ice and snow and we'll see how they operate and I'll video how they get melted and stuff, the ice and off of there and how they work real well. And so hopefully like the next week, I'll get into some snow and ice or something like that or if it's two weeks you know if it's not if it's not within two weeks then I'll probably just do a video and just do a giveaway video uh, the way that's gonna work is in that video you'll be putting a comment down below and and I will do a YouTube run random comment picker again and once uh, you contact me and we verify that it's you then I will send your email address to the thermal King lady to Cheryl at thermal King and I'll tell you what that Cheryl, she she's excited about her heater blade, heated wiper blades. Um, she went on and on and stuff. And I tell you what, I loved it. I like people that are excited at their job, that they're happy to do their job, and she certainly was. So she gave me a lot of information. We're working together here, and I am happy to say, hey, this is a good product. So check it out. I'll put the web page up real quick. It's just www.thermoblade.com. And uh, just like I said in earlier in the video, if you want a pair of these, I don't know if there's anything on the website or something like that, but you can just call them up and order them over the phone and just say, hey, Long Haul Larry sent me, and you'll get 10% off your purchase if you can't wait to see if you win one. So there we go, guys. Well, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that subscribe and make sure to hit that bell right down there on the right corner right below the video. That notifies you every time I put a video out. If you did like it, give it an old thumbs up. So I will let you guys go. I hope everyone out there is having themselves a great day, a great night as they're watching this here video. And if you are not, well, then we certainly could change all that around and try it all over again tomorrow. I will catch you guys later. See ya.